Hello and welcome back to another Teddy's Junction video. Today we've got the Roundhouse Bertie. Um, I've mentioned it um, briefly about the uh, fact that it's going to go for a service and need a little bit of work doing on it. It, it was brought used. Um, the name plate from the other side we're going to just reattach. Um, luckily it was siliconed on so somebody's put them on with the silicon which is fantastic. Um, it, was, it was slightly, it was slightly uneven, unlevel. So it weren't level, so um, obviously we'll reattach it anyway uh, and, and make it straight. So, I mean, someone has done a nice job painting those. And like I say, yeah, the good thing is that we've put on with the silicon, so I mean, it's it's perfect. It's not damaged the paint at all. So that's one of the jobs. But um, the main job will be the service kit. So we've ordered the service kit from Roundhouse. Um, as you can see, that was eight pound fifteen for the cylinders. So it's not not too bad at all. And we'll give those go through those, strip those down, and have a service. Um, the loco's got a Sumlins chuffer fitted. Um, unfortunately, whoever's fitted them, it would appear they've cut the sort of the original exhaust pipes too short. So the the top of the chuffer, I mean, it's it's down here, so you're not getting a full effect of the chuff because it's wasted in the smoke box. So we'll we'll re we're fitting new exhaust pipes, and then we'll cut these down to the correct size. So when we fit the Summerlands chuffer, it will be sort of in the right position to get the maximum chuff in the chimney. Um, last but not least, because it's a basic it's the basic series loco. It's had a the remote control servo installed, um, so we, you can drive it off the off the remote. Hence the battery pack in here. We'll probably just have a look at Taj and Allop as well um, as, as as we go through through this. But we're going to fit the pressure gauge, so we can be confident of what the pressure's running. Obviously, we can adjust it accordingly with a blow-off valve. Um, and yeah, just just give us confidence that she's running where she needs to be with the right pressure. Um, obviously, the Summerlands chuff has been soldered on as well, which is a bit of a pain because you just pushed it. In. I'm not exactly sure why they were sort of soldered on because there's no need for it at all. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. A few little jobs to carry out. Um, to do the cylinders, this base we'll, we'll basically be taking off the the front beam, the tread plate will come off. There's a nut and a bolt on the front. And I know that you can't really see very well with the light, but they'll be. I've already removed it, so you can't see it. But there's a nut and bolt just under there where my finger is, and then you get you get to it from the underside. There's the two screws on the front buffer beam, and that that and that will come straight off. There's a little band here on the tank. You just have to slacken the band on the tank because it holds a couple of tabs to the smoke box. Um, once that and that's out of the way, and you've undone the tab, you'll be able to just sort of wiggle and lift the smoke box out of the way. You'll see me do that, and then we can look at the cylinders. So. On, on here it's had the cylinder covers I believe they're extra but they just pop off so they'll, they'll sort of just sort of pop off lift off the top of those and we'll undo the under the, the bolt there there's the screw there and then underside on the underside and when we get to it There's four Allen keys to either side to hold the cylinders to the chassis, and they're 2.5 mil Allen key, and I've had to actually cut one down, so um, to fit because it did all the original the sort of the stock length were just too long. I couldn't get in, so I've just cut cut one down actually, um, just to reduce the length so I can get on those, and uh, yeah, them cylinders will be off. 
So once the cylinders are off, there's there's a few screws, there's a couple on the top, there's a couple either side of the cylinders, just to basically separate the cylinders, and then you'll have the new seals, we'll change the seals and the gaskets um, as we go. So yeah, here, here it goes. Um, I probably won't do too much chatting as I go for it. I'll just uh, maybe just try and sort of carry on with the job, if you will. Um, and hopefully you can see and watch as I as I go along, and it'll give you an idea. So we remove the screw out there with the flat blade screwdriver and then the nuts. We've got the 5mm, um, just a small 5mm socket, just undo those. So the fixings, I'm just putting the screws and fixings in the pot here, so I'll keep them on the, up to the side, so effectively on the pot I'm going to have my left hand and then the right hand side, I'll keep the screws on their own sides. Um, So as you can see this side's the side where the name plate has come off. So I'll just need to clean that up because it's got the uh, silicon residue on there. And then uh, we'll be able to refit it. There we have it. So I'm going to stand it up on the back. Just be careful now with the connecting rods, because obviously now the connecting rods are swinging, sort of free, free swinging. I don't want to uh, obviously catch one or you know bend one. <clears throat> but with the cut down 2.5 mm Allen key, it's just a case of undoing the four four screws on, on the underside now four bolts okay just note just note the looks there's a the little locking sort of the little locking spring washer on there as well so just be mindful not to lose them locking washers so there's the two from the one cylinder, it won't it won't be ready to come off just yet. We've got the exhaust pipe still uh, attached to the back. Um, they are sort of uh, threaded on to the cylinders, um, and there's the the connections here. We need to just loosen off, but uh, we'll get to that. Right, 
So that's the four screws removed out the cylinders. As I say, the cylinders are sort of held up, held up now by the um, the exhaust pipes. So. so now, obviously, we've taken away the foot plate and the the beam from from beam. We've got the band undone here. I've obviously undone these bits beforehand. So if you just pull the smoke box towards the front of the loco and then if you lift it you sort of lift it up and off because you want that's it because you want to just release the tabs that are here on the back of the smoke box and then that'll come straight off so <clears throat> it hooks on and stays like that when you pull it towards the front effectively to release these you need to sort of pull it forward to, to get those from under the cylinder these little tabs there because they're the ones that the band sits sits on the tank band and then once you've obviously you've just got it enough and out of the way you need to sort of just lift it off because of the uh, the exhaust so that's out of the way and there you have it as you can see you've got the someone's chuffer on the front <clears throat> but as I say it has been soldered on so it's, it's covered in the solder at the moment so I'll have to I'm hoping I can sort of get the cylinders off out of the way and then we can um, maybe just heat this up to get rid of that and get any of the solder out of it ready for when we refit it to the new exhaust pipes which I'll say that we've got, the, got two of the new exhaust pipes there ok so we're at the point I've slackened off the two nuts on the top here that feed from the boiler um, I'm going to take off I can't, they've undone, but they've bottomed out on the cylinders and because the exhaust pipes sort of solder together with the summer inch chuffer I can't sort of separate the cylinders enough to clear the, the feed line so I'm going to take off the cylinder covers as I say they do just sort of push fit um, they just literally just pop on and off so that will reveal the cylinders and then what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to cut the pipe just below the chuffer so I can separate the two cylinders and then that will allow me to sort of pull them aside and just finally just nip off the, the two nuts here. Right, so managed to do it, I cut the pipe, the exhaust as I said to get the summoner's truffle off and we'll clean that up later um, and get the solder and bit sorted so the cylinders came off but this part was quite tight getting it off so we're, what we're actually going to do on reinstalling it I'm going to because this this section here this top piece here is separate to the cylinder part if you like um, I'm going to leave that loose and I'm going to secure this collar to the the feed pipe that comes from the tank in hope that it will go together a bit easier than it come apart because it was a little bit awkward actually to be honest um, but they're off they're off it might be a lesson learned again I'm not sure until I've done it so obviously these these exhaust pipes they will only be able to obviously be screwed in with this plate being off because this nipple will be out of the way because I can't get to undo it anyway so yeah while the strip down we'll build it back up and we'll leave if you like the, the head off the cylinder and then we'll install the head and the cylinders sort of on the loca in situ so there's the cylinder off anyway as you can see 
So there's the four screws across the back, four screws on the front, and then the four screws across the top. And it will all start to, uh, I'd imagine, will all start to come apart and start seeing the, the seals and and bits. So I'm gonna have a have a strip down of those and see how it get see how we get on. The top. Yeah. <coughs> Bless you. Thanks. So as I, as I dismantle the cylinders, I'm going to sort of line up the parts for each cylinder as we go, just so I know then when pointing it back, I'll just basically reverse my way. Right there you go. So obviously when that screws all the way back like that, there is a there is a seal in there, but when that goes all the way back, I think that'll give us enough sort of room then to be able to reattach this back on the loco and then we'll put the cylinders on underside and secure them from the top. Not sure if uh, if anybody's looked in these or seen. Okay, so the screws are off on the front and back, so there's the front plate. There's a, a small gasket there. And then we'll take off the back one. And that's the piston. So there's a o-ring seal there and then there's the another gasket seal there and then I would imagine there's perhaps a small o-ring in there as well as a seal maybe no yes there is so just inside there Right, so there's one cylinder stripped down into the pieces. So it'd be the right under the loco cylinder. There's the front plate gasket cylinder, rear gasket piston, and then there's the O ring on the piston and O ring in the nut. Right, so there's the two cylinders stripped down. I'm um, going to have a look at the seal kit in a minute. 
Um, just obviously I'll just go through the seals, make sure I know what we've got before I start removing any of the seals as such. Um, it, I just wanted to just mention obviously the top the top of the cylinders. So this valve here is, is adjustable. Um, it might be worth considering when you've disconnected it, if you can get yourself a vernier or something just to measure how much the the valve piston sticking out against the cylinder so we've got 22 mil um, I did I did knock the one I was quite conscious I, I actually knocked to the one side so I measured that and it was 21.5 and it, it was two turns to bring it back up to 22 mils so just so you got something to work with or like or even just a reference point if you can if you just take a measurement of the valve at the top of the cylinder so for this instance it's 22 mil and if you write that down you sort of know when you go in when you've built them all back up and you're going back on putting them back on the loco you know where you were set and then you shouldn't have no troubles <coughs> So the seal kit, I'm just going to take it out of the bag, uh, I'll see what see what we've got, um, line them up so I know that I can sort of build them back up with the new seals where they need to go, I'm not removing any and potentially damaging to find out that there's perhaps not one in here or it's not required, so yeah just have a little look at that. So it's a quick, quick look at the uh, service kit. The seals in there, we've got the paper cover gasket seals, there's the valve chest O-rings, um, the, there is two for the piston rings which I've already taken one out just to have a look at it. Um, there's a smaller one there which is for the uh, valve spindle gland seal, so that will go in there. So when I mentioned earlier, when, when we unscrew that and take off the gland nut, um, we'll change the O-ring. But as I said, mentioned earlier about measuring from the top to the to the base, if you like, we had 22 mils. Obviously, it's worth making a note so I can put it exactly where it sort of was, put it back exactly where it was when I've changed the seal on that. Um, and it looks like we've got some graphite yarn there. Um, not sure what it's for. I'm assuming it possibly it's possibly for the rectangle. Um, valves because I know there's a picture referencing the rectangle valve cylinder there there it is so I'm not sure if possibly it's something to do with that model or, or that model of cylinder anyway um, there's no reference to it on there so I, you know I don't believe we'll need that uh, be using it so yeah so I'm going to I'm going to put the new seals on, I'll build it up, um, obviously like I say I've got the new piston ring one there, I've already taken the old one off which is there so I'll just put the old ones aside, we've got the new one for the valve, a bit, bit, bit small um, and I'll be using some steam oil to sort of uh, aid assembling and yeah so I'll build those up. We'll see how it goes.